My name's Amata, and in this Red Gamer Tech video, I am here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So, what do I have for you today? Well, I have a couple of pieces regarding Spectre and Meltdown, as Microsoft have released a Windows 10 patch that will address Spectre Variant 2. Unfortunately, there's also a new variant of the Spectre attack on Intel CPUs, but of course we'll visit that later. Also, got a report claiming that we're going to see a significant decrease in chip growth in 2018, and trapped ion quantum computers will become viable in our final item. So let's begin with Microsoft and Spectre, shall we? Microsoft have now released a new manual update for Windows 10, which is going to be for 6th gen Intel CPUs. And as I said in the introduction to this video, this is going to be addressing the Spectre Variant 2 flaw in these particular processors. Now this is going to be for Windows 10 version 1709, which is the full creators update, or if you're using Windows Server, it is going to be 1709 Server Core. So you might ask, okay, so what CPUs is this update actually targeting and the answer is most of the 6th gen processors in the mainstream market so you've got the high performance ones the S high, um, the high performance mobile H low power mobile on U and ultra low power chips in tablets under Y and those that fall under Intel Skylake U32E umbrella so basically TLDR most of the 6th generation is going to be addressed by this patch now, of course, this comes fairly fast on the heels of Intel themselves, who issued a revised update which addresses both Meltdown and Spectre. So, pretty uh, rapid-fire patches coming out here, but of course, people are definitely scrambling to address these issues as soon as possible. But I have a bit of a statement here from Microsoft regarding the update, who say, quote, This update is a standalone update available through the Microsoft Update Catalog. This update also includes Intel microcode updates that were already released for these operating systems at the time of release to manufacturing. We will offer additional microcode updates from Intel through this KB article for these operating systems as they become available to Microsoft. Soft. As I said at the start of this video, this is going to be available through the Microsoft Update Catalog, which basically means that any Windows 10 device is going to be addressed with this particular patch. So basically, if you've been a little bit concerned about Meltdown and Spectre, which you very much should be concerned, I would recommend downloading this update as soon as you are able. Hopefully it won't have major issues like the last update, but that seems to be mostly ironed out now, so fingers crossed. But moving on to less positive news, as I mentioned, there is also unfortunately a new Spectre attack variant. And this is actually to do with Intel's SGX protective enclaves. And you might scratch your head and go, bruh? What is this? Basically, it is a feature available in newer Intel Core chips and basically allows developers to isolate sensitive application code and data to run in their own execution environment. So this particular sort of wall garden, as it were, is created by the CPU. Now, this allows sensitive parts of an application to run in its own memory region inside the enclave and basically protects it from system software, including the operating systems. So basically, researchers from Ohio State University published a paper basically saying that the Meltdown and Spectre attacks raised questions in their minds over SGX's res resilience to them, and unfortunately they discovered that it's not that resilient at all, and is also quite difficult to fix as, of course, Meltdown and Spectre have been themselves. According to their paper, an attacker using the SGX Spectre can, quote, completely compromise the confidentiality of SGX enclaves and also learn the content of that particular enclave's memory. And this particular attack focuses on two hardware features of Intel processors that are designed to enhance a chip's performance through speculative execution. So this is all to do with branch prediction and, of course, so if you have branch prediction of enclave code, it can then be manipulated by code outside the enclave and implicit caching of memory caused by speculatively executed instructions. So a bit of a more in-depth explanation as per the paper. And of course, I will link it in the description below this video if you want to give the whole thing a read. They say, quotes, the branch prediction units used in the enclave mode for predicting branch targets are not thoroughly cleansed upon enclave entrance. 
Therefore, code outside the targeted enclave, either running in the unprotected memory region or in another enclave, can manipulate the targets of the branch prediction inside the targeted enclave. Implicit caching caused by speculatively executed instructions are not properly rolled back after these instructions are discarded, which means the speculatively executed instructions, though never committed to memory, may lead to cache state changes that are observable by the adversary. And unfortunately, they also discovered that any code built with STKs will be affected. This includes Rust SGX and Graphene SGX as well. So basically, anything in Intel Software Development Kit that was used is unfortunately vulnerable for this. However, the researchers did also report all of this to Intel, and they reported that mitigations for not only Spectre and Meltdown, but that combination with SGX will be due on March 16th to be in particular in order to prevent this particular attack. And they have actually released a statement reading, quote, We are aware of the research paper from Ohio State and have previously provided information and guidance online about how Intel SGX may be impacted by the side channel analysis vulnerabilities. We anticipate that the existing mitigations for Spectre and Meltdown, in conjunction with updated software development toolkit for SGX application providers, which we plan to begin making available on March 16th, will be effective against the methods described in that research. We recommend customers make sure they are always using the most recent version of the toolkit. So basically, Intel are aware, they're confident that not only are the more generic updates going to help handle this, but they've actually got, you know, a targeted update for this as well, as well as a new version of the toolkit with this in mind. So, you know, let's not, you know, panic and screaming and running through the streets just be just yet, excuse me, but it's just a, another sort of explanation or example to be more accurate of just how awful the Meltdown and Spectre vulnerabilities actually are. So let's move on from that piece of doom and gloom to another piece of doom and gloom as there is a report floating around regarding chip growth and how it's going to fall. As there has been a forecast from the World Semiconductor Trade Statistics that has estimated that semiconductor sales in 2018 are only going to grow by 9.5%. And you might go, oh, that doesn't sound too bad. However, the issue is the contrast with 2017, which saw a growth of 21.6% based on actual figures. So we saw an actual growth of 21.6% last year. And if their forecast is correct, we're only going to see a growth of 9.5% this year. But it's not all bad because obviously this report could be incorrect or the forecast to be more accurate. But they have also said that despite this dip, it's still likely to deliver revenues of 451 billion. So it's a dip, but, you know, let's not, you know, panic and, you know, run around screaming just yet. It's definitely something to keep an eye on, though, because obviously if this sort of decline in growth continues and it becomes a larger issue and obviously raises concern and obviously has impact on the industry as a whole but for the moment at least yes it's something to keep an eye on it's something to raise an eyebrow but it's not the end of the world but it is definitely concerning that we are seeing such a sharp drop or at least we should be seeing a sharp drop if the forecast is accurate of course they could be wrong on this but I'm sure they know what they're talking about, they're just making these claims willy-nilly, but, you know, the real world is often random and doesn't behave as you'd expect. So, we may see a drop, but not as drastic a drop, we could see even more of a drop, or we could even see growth. But, I would assume that we're going to see a drop round about what they're saying, but of course, that's pure speculation on my part, based upon what they're saying. So, let's move on to our final item for today, which is regarding Trapped Ion Quantum Computers. Now you may recall back at Intel CES conference earlier on this year, a big topic of that conference was of course quantum computers. And people, not only Intel, have been trying to work on multiple types of universal quantum computers since the 90s. But we have actually seen a nice bit of progress which could make things a little bit easier as a team of researchers from the University of Oxford were able to drastically increase the speed of trapped ion logic gates, basically making it more practical to build a real trapped ion quantum computer. Now the previous types of quantum computers that we have seen 
haven't been super conducting as they are the furthest ahead in the number of logical qubits as well as of course the all important performance. And unfortunately in the field of trapped ion quantum computers the logic gates have been historically much slower than their superconducting counterparts. But thankfully those researchers as I said from the University of Oxford were able to increase the speed of trapped ion logic gates without compromising accuracy. And this basically means that trapped ion quantum computers tend to have much lower error rates. So they were able to increase the speed of the logic gate without compromising this sort of pro to this particular type of quantum computer. Now I'm going to let the experts speak for themselves for a second as they did release a small statement and they said, quote, trapped ions move like a pendulum during the gate operation. But when this process is sped up, they become sensitive to a number of factors that cause errors. By making use of a technique that precisely shapes the force of the ions such, as, such that the gate performance becomes robust to these factors, we were able to increase the speed by a factor of 20 to 60 compared with the previous best gates, 1.6 microseconds long with 99.8% precision. So basically, we are now coming to the point, thanks to this research and the hard work of the fellows over at University of Oxford, where work can actually begin on a viable trapped ion quantum computer. So, you know, while superconductors are great and all, obviously we've seen great things happening there, this seems like a pretty interesting step forward and we could see a significant improvement in the future. Obviously this is not something that's going to be happening tomorrow and obviously it's not going to affect you or I, but it is still interesting. As I said many times before, this is one of the things that I love about technology. You know, you make that one realisation and it suddenly just opens up a whole new world to you and it can have all sorts of ripple effects that go across various arms of the industry and affect people's lives in unexpected ways through realizations that people have had based upon that base realization if you get what i'm saying so it's pretty damn cool to say the least anyway that is me done for this video thank you very much for watching do remember to like and subscribe and also check us out on patreon at patreon.com forward slash raid gaming tech if you haven't done so already your support really does make a huge deal and a huge difference excuse me to both myself and paul so thanks again for watching Bye bye